funny thing form. Last week, St. Pat's won by five. Sligo lost by three. But last night, Jimmy Mullen saw his side record their first win under his management, thanks to goals by Lou Cody. The first, as sweet a volley as you're likely to see. McKenna well beaten as St. Pat's failed to clear. And there was Cody on the edge of the box. Wonderful goal. And after St. Pat's missed several chances to equalise, Sligo clinched the points. This time, Cody showed great awareness as he placed his shot past McKenna's left hand. A great night for the Wrexham player who's now on loan in Sligo Rovers. And for Jimmy Mullen, pressure lifted his first win in charge of Sligo Rovers. Sligo Rovers. Division 1 leaders Balamina are averaging about two goals a game at present and took the lead just before half-time last night. Barry Patton scored. Seconds into the second half, Sligo Rovers equalised. Steve Futcher was on target. But Balamina blasted back in front ten minutes from time. Desi Lockery has been in tremendous form recently and he scored another excellent goal. Taking his tally into double figures for the season. Last year, Balamina had the best offensive record in the Irish League, and so far this season they've only conceded seven goals. But surprisingly, they let in three in the last eight minutes last night. Lee Thu levelled the scores, and James Mulligan made it 3-2. The goal, definitely offside. And Mulligan netted again within a minute. Another offside decision not given. 4-2 to Sligo, and the Balamina manager, Alan Fraser, not happy and rightly so. Well, now we're off to Balamina for tonight's carol. Hello the new man weekend. Well sometimes Bray Wanderers battling performances belie their lowly position in the league. This afternoon at the Carlisle ground they went behind after only 39 seconds. James Mulligan opening Sligo Rovers account and at that early stage it all looked pretty ominous for one of the league's bottom clubs. 26 minutes later, it was 2-0. Again, it was James Mulligan who caused the Bray Wanderers' defence all sorts of problems, nice first-time control, and finishing superbly with the outside of the foot. But whatever Pat Devlin said at half-time, it did the trick, because Bray Wanderers showed their fighting qualities in the second period and pulled a goal back through Alan Dodd just 11 minutes after the restart. Super strike giving the keeper no chance as the ball went in off the right-hand post. Well, five minutes later, Dodd was involved in the build-up to the goal that would eventually earn Bray Wanderers a point. The ball coming in and eventually falling to Richie Parsons, always dangerous in and around the goal mouth, and no goalkeeper would have kept that one out, a superb strike by Richie Parsons. In the dying moments of the game, Sligo Rovers substitute Donna Oates almost grabbed full points for the visitors, but his superb shot came back off the crossbar. It finished level. Run moved to 10 games as they made the best of start against Sligo. Jim Moen provided the ammunition from the flank. Gary Beckett's cushion header found Peter Hutton onside, and the league's best midfielder finished with lightning speed for his ninth goal in the league. Sligo contributed handsomely in an excellent contest, but Derry might have doubled their advantage late in the first half. Richie Purdy's cross, headed on by Liam Coyle, and Moen brought out the best in Nicky Brujock. Sligo's best chances came after the break. John Kenny's run past Tommy Dunn forced Tony O'Dowd into action as Derry hung on for their seventh win in their last eight matches. That's real championship form. Yes, well, that win put Derry six points clear. Both sides are still a long way adrift. Two first-half goals for Sligo ended Cup Dreams down in Cove last night, both slightly bizarre. Here's the first, Gareth O'Sullivan's centre getting just a scrape off Donna Oates' head. That was enough to lead the keeper rooted to the spot. But have a look at the second. A Sligo attack comfortably dealt with by Michael Devine. But he was on his tippy toes at the edge of the box and was a judge by the linesman to have stepped outside. Despite the protests of the local custodian, a free kick for Sligo right in front of the posts. And what a free. First there was John Kenny's aborted attempt, 
Cold confused, the fleet from Mark Hutchinson, and finally Steve Burks is slapping it home. In the second half, Cove missed a penalty before Sligo put them out of their misery. Porrick Moran's low drive, 20 minutes from time, clinching the tie. Struggling Dundalk capitalised on their early first half dominance when Fintan McConville scored with this 30-yard shot from after 27 minutes. Sligo keeper Nick Bruges completely deceived by the flight of the ball. But Sligo fought back and as the first half came to a close, got their reward. Dundalk fullback David Crawley conceded a penalty when he stopped Chris Twiddy in his tracks with a clumsy challenge inside the area. Porrick Moran sent Les Fridge the wrong way with his spot kick, all square at the showgrounds. Sligo kept up the pressure and on 42 minutes new signing Marcus Hallows marked his league debut with a goal which also gave Sligo the points. Final score, Sligo 2, Dundalk 1.